What's up guys, John here. So this week is gonna be a lot of fun. This week is gonna be Synthwave week. So the last week I put together about three Synthwave tracks every day after another, and it was a lot of fun. So I figured why not take some of those favorite patches that I like inside Pigments and show you how to make them and give you a free preset. So with that being said, let's hop into Bitwig and let's get started here. So this first one is gonna be this bass vintage bass ARP. Which sometimes it's funny. Do you, do you label them as a bass if it's an ARP bass, or do you label it as an ARP even though it's, I don't even know. Anyway, let's get into it. So this is the bass ARP. And this one is not necessarily meant to be a super clean sound. It's kind of got that like meaty grittiness to it. And I want to point your attention to some of the macros. So the first one we have is a cutoff. And then the next one's going to be resonance, as you probably guessed it. And then the third one, I kind of wanted to put something a little bit different. So I put a cutoff depth. So how much of this second envelope is gonna modulate the cutoff? And that's going to be this guy. So if you don't want it too movie, I guess, then you can adjust that to taste. But yeah, that's basically this guy here in a nutshell. And the fourth one is gonna be effects. So if we re instantiate this guy but look at the effects here we don't really have too much we have some eq some compression a little bit of distortion which is more so kind of saturation i suppose and then we have some delay so with that being said let's kind of get into this guy and there's some interesting stuff in the sequencer that we're going to get to and uh yeah let's rebuild this guy so let's open up another copy here of pigments and kind of bring this guy a little bit down here hopefully my face isn't blocking some stuff here but anyway, so basically this guy starts off and we're just using the analog engine here. The utility engine is also not used at all. So really just the first analog engine. So let's go to a new preset on this guy. And yeah, we're targeting this guy. Okay. So basically what we're doing, we're doing a saw wave and another saw wave and a, another saw wave. So three saw waves and they're all gonna be 100% inside the mix. So we can go over to the analog and let's go do that right now. Okay. Pretty cool. And we're going to take the course down to 12 semitones. Something like that. We have some kind of media already. And then the second oscillator is going to be down another 12. Do so have something kind of like that. And then on the second oscillator, we're going to be fine tuning this at 0 0.032. So we turn this to the right, 0 0.032, just a little bit. And on the third one, it's going to be negative 0 0.096. So just a little bit to the left like that. Okay, so next up, we have this drift knob over here. Now, this one is really cool because if we if we hover our mouse over this, this says adds randomness to the pitch of each voice and it makes chords wider. So with that being said, this is by default at 0 0.010. And I did increase this a little bit to 0 0.019. I feel it kind of adds a little bit more to the authenticity of the sound. So there we go. So we have that pretty much done. Now, what we're gonna be using for a filter is gonna be this SEM, which I think is actually quite nice for this type of sound. I went through all the other ones, although I do like the MS-20. I feel like the SEM was kind of a little bit better choice for this sound, but feel free to experiment with different filters. So if we go here and we look at the cutoff, so this is going to be at 24.2. So it brings down to 24.2. So pretty, pretty low down here, something kind of like this here, right? So we can kind of really barely hear stuff. Now we can see there's a lot of stuff modulating this. So first things first, the uh, envelope here is gonna be envelope two at 0.52. So we can drag and drop this guy here and just increase this to 0.52. So quite a lot of modulation depth, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to put this control on a macro and we're gonna get to that in just a little bit. So we have something kind of like that. Now, if you look at our envelopes here, if we adjust the second one, so the attack's gonna be one, which is default, so that's fine. And then our decay is 343 milliseconds, so we can bring this down to 343, something kind of like that here. And then our sustains all the way down, our release is gonna be 100, which I do believe is default, yeah. So we basically have that. Now let's take a look at our 
envelope VCA here. So our attack is going to be one, which is default. Decay is 391 here. So 391 like that. And then our sustain is going to be all the way down. And if we look at our curve, this is going to be negative 2.88. So let's bring this down to or bring it up to negative 2.88, something right there. And on this guy as well, the curve is going to be negative 2, which I believe was that default. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay, so we have our two envelopes set up. We're pretty much we're kind of in a good spot. Now, something about this cutoff that I do want to bring your attention to, we can start mapping some of these other things here. So the first one I do want to mention is going to be this random at 0 0.05. So if you grab this random drag and drop this here on the cutoff and bring this to 0 0.05. Now, what this is basically doing is every time we're hitting different notes and playing this patch, the cutoff isn't always going to be at the exact same spot, which kind of makes it a little bit more unpredictable. And it's very subtle. It's kind of one of those things that's like you wouldn't really notice it, but adding stuff like that does kind of help make the sound a little bit more authentic, I suppose. <laughs> so we have that. That's nothing too crazy. If we go to our random here, this is just going to be on touring. We're getting kind of different stuff like this. So next up, what we have, if we look on the main one and we look, we see this kind of this thing around here, right? So we look at envelope two and we say, okay, what's happening here? So we have this filter cutoff at 0.52, right? So that's how much the depth is going to be modulating this cutoff knob. But on macro three, this is side chained at one. So what does that mean? So if we go over here to the second envelope and then we can go to side chain. Now this is going to be on the third macro. So we select macro three and then we bring this all the way to one. Now, if this macro is all the way down, we're not really going to have that motion. The only slight motion that we see is going to be that randomness. But as soon as we start increasing this, we're going to get more and more of that depth. And all the way at the top, we're going to get the full uh, 0.52. So we can relabel this now. So we can put cut off depth for this guy right there. Okay, so that's done. And then the next one here is going to be the macro on this main guy. Let's close this out. And the macro one is going to be 0.25. So we can drag and drop this here. And that's default 0.25 uh, and then label this as cut off. So we can move that macro as we like. If we want something a little bit more open. Which I tend to have that open all the way if you, you know, just, I guess for, for this, but it's really depending on how, what sound you're kind of going for. And then we have the resonance. So this is all the way down by default. And then the macro depth is number two at 0.39. So we can drag and drop this to the resonance and 0.39 and label this as res. Just something kind of like that. Now, another thing that you're going to notice is that this filter here, so the output of this first filter is going into the input of the second filter, which is an MS-20, and we're on a high pass. So why would we high pass the bass? So with a little bit of resonance, we can get some nice meat at the bottom. So we turn this guy on, scroll once over here to the MS-20, and we're going to change this to the high pass 6. And if we look at our cutoff, this is going to be at 59.5 hertz. So we can bring this down to 59.5 hertz like that. And if we look at our resonance, this is going to be at 0.368. We get a little bit of that beef at the bottom. And it also runs through the, uh, through the MS-20, which is also pretty cool as well. Okay, so we're pretty much done at this level here. So now we kind of want to look at some of the effects. So... The first effect is going to be an EQ, so we can change this delay to an EQ. Now over here, I'm not doing too much stuff. So on the first one, we have 195 hertz, and we're taking out about two deeps or something like that. So first one, 195, something around here-ish, right? And then if I boost this, that's the stuff we're kind of trying to get rid of a little bit. And not too much, just a little bit, a couple deeps maybe. And then this guy, I kind of just swept till I found a certain spot that I liked, which ended up being 881 hertz. So on the second guy, second band, 881, somewhere around there. That's fine. It doesn't have to be exact. And then we're pushing this just by 2.1 D. We get a little bit more clarity and then kind of removing some of that mud. So the next one is going to be this compressor here. So let's add a compressor to this guy. And if we look here, our, our uh, ratio is going to be a little bit 8 to 1-ish. I'm kind of like that here. And we're going to bring our threshold down just a little tickle. Maybe something like that. And increase our attack to maybe a little bit past 10 or 11. And then what do we have for our release? 23. 
And then we can give us some output, I believe, as well. So 2.25 deeps. Okay, so we have a pretty cool sound at this point. Now the next one's gonna be distortion. So let's add our distortion and the algorithm is gonna be on tape. So let's go over to tape right over here. And then our drive is gonna be 23.8. So we can increase this to 23.8, something right around here. And then the dry wet for this guy is actually gonna be pretty low at 0 0.20. So we're gonna put that on a macro a little bit later. So 20%. You kind of get that grossness to it. And if you don't like it, you want a little bit more clean, just you can feel free to just remove this entirely or maybe just dial down the dry wet just a little bit. And then lastly is gonna be a little bit of delay here. So on FXB, let's select here and let's go to our delay. So just a basic delay here. Now this is going to be on a dotted eighth note. So let's change this to dotted. Let's bring this down to an eighth note and then also increase our high pass and drop down the low pass a little bit. It doesn't have to be these exact values here, but basically cutting off that really low end and some of the top end. We have a little bit of a, a little bit of delay there. So our dry wet's gonna be at 0.16. So let's bring this down to 16%. And then that should look just about right here. Okay, so we basically got all the core pieces that we need. Now let's kind of focus on the sequencer or really the ARP here. So if we turn this on and we take a look and see what's going on here. So I have all of these basically going through 16 right over here, right? And if we play this, if we select this guy and we play this, you can see it's going in a random direction and it's like, well, why exactly would I want that? So the reason I did that, if we go to this main one here and let's change our mode to random, the only stuff I really changed is a little bit of this gate length, right? So if we look at this main guy, so this is 84.8, this one's 72.4, this is 72.4, 80%, 88.1, 80%, 88.1, so on and so forth, right? So the goal is that every single step should have a slightly different gate length. So it's not exactly the same every single time. So maybe this one, we can bring this up to 80.1. Maybe leave that one alone, bring this up to maybe 96 or something, 84, whatever. And I just move these around a little bit, right? So they're just a little bit different every single time. Maybe 72 for that guy. Skip this one, maybe, I don't know, 96.7. And yeah, just kind of move these around a little bit just so they're kind of a little bit different. So the point is, is that if they were gonna be on a sequential thing, then every single time the note would hit, we'd kind of almost subconsciously know what pattern that would be. So having done random is gonna hit random ones every single time, which kind of will make it sound like this. A little bit more authentic in that case. So we had our drums here. Now, some of these are a little bit excessive, so some of them might be a little bit too short here. So maybe let's dial some of those back here. Maybe it was like the uh, 72. Let's bring that back up to maybe 78, something like that. 97, that one's kind of okay. 80, 65, yeah, that one's a little bit too short. Let's bring this guy up maybe a little bit more. And then I think these are, we didn't touch these two. Okay, so that's kind of maybe fine. Let's maybe bring that 84, that's fine. And the last thing that we actually really need to do is go and go to our effects tab and kind of put this last macro on the effects. So let's type this as effects. And then we can go over here and then let's drag and drop the four to our distortion, which is gonna be 20%. But like I said, if this is too much for you, it might be, maybe we can go down to like 15, so 0.15. And then for our delay, let's drag and drop this guy. And this is 16%, so that would be 0.16 for the depth right there. And then turn our macro all the way up.
but yeah, feel free to adjust the gay lengths or the distortion or really any kind of stuff like that. So that's basically how this patch was made. It's not too crazy, but there's kind of a little things they would think, at, think about, like the little difference of the cutoff there. And yeah, I believe we added everything that we need to on this guy. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you would like to have this patch for yourself and not have to recreate it, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.